He then said unto them, But before all these things they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. And some of you shall they cause be put to death, and ye shall be hated by all men for my name's sake. Having given them that dire warning, he then spoke words of comfort. But there shall not a hair of your head that shall perish, and in your patience possess ye your souls. From the first martyrdom of the deacon Stephen at the hands of the Jews, to the great persecutions of the pagan rulers, to strife to mar and martyrdoms at the hands of the heretics, to the oppression and martyrdoms of the Turks, of the Turkish yoke, the words of the Lord proved themselves true time and time again. Even after these waves of a martyrdom in the ancient world, the words of our Lord continue to show themselves true. Always the church and those who had hold to belief in Jesus Christ are singled out, are persecuted, imprisoned, and even killed by those who live according to the way of the world. Today, we recall the beginning of the most recent wave of persecution and martyrdom, and we call to mind the new martyrs and confessors of the Russian Church. Certainly, this persecution began under the communist yoke of the Russian Revolution and was pervasive and tragic, but it was not limited to Russia alone nor did it end after the first wave of martyrs. This persecution continued on in Russia and spread to other nations. From the Slavic lands of Eastern Europe, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, and so on, to the Christians throughout China. Just as this persecution seems to have uh, abated with the fall of the various communist governments of, in Russia and Eastern Europe, so now we begin to see it rise up again in the cultural revolution of the Western nations, including the Americas. Those who hold to the Christian faith, believing in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and attempting to live accordingly, are increasingly considered to be ignorant, intolerant, unloving, bigoted, prejudiced, and even evil. This is not a political phenomenon, because all sides of the political spectrum participate in this persecution of Christians, while, and all the while seeking to identify the other side as the true culprit. This is the work of the evil one in the whole world. It is not right against left, red against blue, conservative against liberal, liberal or any other, any other dichotomy that we're presented with in the political spectrum. This is a struggle of the world and the prince of this world, that is the devil, against Christ, against Christ and his servants. And we are in the midst of it. But hear the words of the Lord. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manners of evil against you for, uh, falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. These are the concluding verses of the Beatitudes that we sing at every liturgy before the gospel is brought out. And again, from the gospel reading of today, and it shall turn out to you a testimony. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist, but there shall not be a hair of your head perish. In the midst of all this trial and all this difficulty, we know that God himself has us in his care, giving us all that is needed to remain steadfast in our confession and to protect us from all harm. How is it, you might ask, that our Lord Jesus Christ can say in one moment, some of you they will cause to be put to death, and then almost immediately, not a hair of your head shall perish. 
This is not some inherent contradiction, but rather it's a reminder that we who follow Christ do not have the perspective of this world. Yes, we will suffer physically, some even quite horribly, and yes, some will even die, but this is of no importance. God will give to us the strength to endure every persecution. Remember that he tells us not to fear the one who can harm the body, but that we should instead fear the one who can kill the soul. That is, we should only concern ourselves with God himself and not with the things of this world. Any temporal difficulty, pain, or suffering that we might face in this world for his sake, even the separation of the soul and body will be counted unto us for righteousness and will bring great eternal rewards in the kingdom of heaven. God's concern for us is the salvation of our soul and to bring us into his presence with joy and rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven. If we should enjoy earthly comforts and pleasures in this life, then glory to God. For thee, But if these comforts and pleasures are taken from us in this life, then remember that they are temporary and of limited duration, and that they will be replaced by eternal joys and the pleasures of the kingdom of heaven. Martyrdom is giving up our life so that we might receive in return the life of Christ. For some that means a long life, full of self-denial and bearing one's cross. For others, that means suffering and literal death for Christ. Whatever we're given in this life, remember that it is a gift from God which is meant to bring us to our salvation. We need to reorient ourselves so that we no longer look at our lives from the perspective of this world, where comfort, pleasures, freedom from suffering and any discomfort, let alone pain, uh, the esteem and agreement of men, the acquisition of riches and other possessions and so on are the goal. No, let us instead count this world as temporary and remember that our true home is in heaven. Let us set our goals on acquiring the gifts of God. Mercy, life, love, joy, peace, soul, and the other fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is the struggle that leads to martyrdom but also it is the dichotomy that places even physical suffering and death as nothing, and which promises that not even a hair of our head will be harmed. The new martyrs who confesses in the Russian church, whose memory we celebrate today, are the first wave of the martyrs of the modern world. We know that, they, that we are their brothers and sisters, and that they have borne the onset of this new episode of persecution and martyrdom that will face the church in our lives, in the lives of our children and grandchildren. Today, more than ever before, we need to remember that we have embraced Christ. And even more important, that he has embraced us. We have come to him and he has received us. He knows that we will face great difficulties, but he will give us the superhuman, or let us say, the divine strength to endure the wisdom and words to confess him before men. He has promised us that every pain, every sorrow, every moment of suffering born for his sake in this mortal and temporal world will bring us in return great reward in heaven. We don't have to be famous. How many martyrs and saints remain unknown in this world? We only have to be faithful. Jesus said to us, all those who endure to the end will be saved. This is the key. Whether we suffer a literal and profound martyrdom or whether we or whether we live a, a long life of self-denial and bearing our cross. Let us all endure to the end that we might be saved. Remember the final instruction of our Lord in the Gospel that we heard today. In your patience, possess ye your souls. I was once in a group where the question was asked, if your house could caught fire and you could only save one thing, what would it be? There were many answers from treasured keepsakes to valuable heirlooms, and even in the information stored on a computer. But truly, the only thing that we should strive to possess is our faith in Christ. All those precious worldly things will not save us. Food, drink, clothing, shelter will not save us. There is only one thing that will save us, and that is our faith in Christ. This, then, is the key, to take hold of our Lord Jesus Christ and never let go of him. That's all we have to do. Everything else is provided by him, and he will bring us into his kingdom. He will heal us, 
He will make us whole. He will set us in the choir of the saints in the presence, in his presence, that together with one voice we will praise and glorify him throughout eternity. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.